Hello, and welcome to Stress Less with me, Jess. Today, my special guest is Edie Holdison. Hello, Edie. How are you? I'm good. So excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, of course. I'm excited to have you on here. And I'm excited to hear about your new uh, journey that you're on as well. Because when we first met, not that you're doing dramatically different, but you kind of are. So I want to let everybody know why you're amazing. So... Uh, your journey from a limited worldview to an abundance has been a winding road that continues onto the horizon. Along the way, you have picked up a degree in civil engineering and has experienced leadership and coaching in the nonprofit and for-profit space. Your biggest teacher, however, has been the journey of healing after being a part of an exit, exiting a cult. Currently, you are empowering a coach for helping women reclaim their self-trust after spiritual disorienting experiences. Wow, 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 wow. You don't even know where to start. <laughs> Neither do I have the time. <laughs> the alarm goes off in the morning. You're like, wait, what do I know? I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> well, I'm so excited for you to be on here. Like you said, when we first met, and I know you still do it a little bit, you were in the construction field, you're trying to help yeah. men come home to work and things like that. But it sounds like over your journey and through your life experience, obviously it's always been a life experience, you know, ex- you know exiting cult, starting a family, you have two daughters, if I'm correct, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you, you know, obviously there's been plenty of journeys just within that self. So right. why don't you tell us, why don't we do the one question I think I want to know first is tell me about the transition from doing the construction, getting men home before dinner to now being that leadership um, empowerment coach. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for asking. So that thread of wanting to help women reclaim their sovereignty has been present with me for years. It's kind of popped up in little side hobbies that I've immediately tamped down. Um, I can't monetize that. You know, uh, there's so many women who are already doing great work. Like my voice is not needed. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's been there trying to bud and I've just kind of chopped it. So um, <laughs> this what was different this time around was really um, myself getting coaching. Um, I've been through therapy, um, which was really amazing. And um, now working with a life coach, when I felt like I was kind of at a place to move in that direction, um, I began to really tap into my desires and what what my intuition was telling me. And I realized I was really ignoring this part of me that was super passionate about um, seeing us as women live our fullest lives. Um, And especially uh, women who've been systemically told that, you know, your voice doesn't matter. And by systemically, I mean, like in the construct of a like harmful spiritual situation or even, you know, an abusive marriage, which I'm thankful I've never had to experience. Um, And so, uh, yes, I was like, huh, I'm super passionate about this, but maybe I'll just do another side thing. And I was talking to one of my best friends and she's like, you literally, this is all you ever talk about is women receiving freedom. And I was like, well, I just thought you get super excited and passionate about things. And then you like put it on the shelf and you go get the actual job, you know? And she was like, that's not how that works. And so I needed to be coached in that myself. So yeah, this, this transition really came about from me listening, doing what I want to help others do, right? Listen to ourselves and then take those inspired steps as we receive them. And um, yeah, I'm just excited. It's, um, it's weird to say, but part of me just assumed that I am the one person who doesn't get to do what they love um, as their full-time job. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. So here I am doing that. <laughs> So awesome. So first of all, kudos to one doing therapy and then coaching because they're both amazing and they're both needed at maybe sometimes together, sometimes at different times. Right. And so for you to be able to see that they are different, but it yeah. does not in a bad way. I think sometimes um, one gets a bad, more bad rep than others, depending on your right. views. And I yes. really think that they can really coexist. Yes. And, you know, and I just, one just, they just do something different for everybody. And I just think it's right. so cool. So I'm so happy to hear that you were doing the therapy work and that's amazing. And you're like, okay, cool. Now I'm ready for this additional support, this difference, a different kind of point of view, maybe different options right. and then took them. And now look at this different kind of transition. So yeah. it's so cool that you got to experience that. And I think that's really awesome to hear. Cause I think a lot of times we either do one or the other. So right. yeah, kudos, kudos studio. So, but I think also, I think you were kind of scratching this when we first met, but just in a general of oh, I'm going to do this in the contract and feel and get people right. home. Because I think what we tend to do, especially when it comes to our passions, it's very much, oh, like you said, oh, I just do it on the side. It's right. just 
fun. And there's nothing wrong with those passions. And I think this is where we get confused too, is that, oh, I have the, I'm a passion about traveling. Okay. That's great. Mm-hmm. And that could be your passion. And your nine to five is just something that you like, and you have certain passions without, within, you know, the, right. um, the job itself. But I think sometimes we think what they can't be both. And that's really yeah. hard. Right. So yeah. super, super awesome for that. So now you are helping women be more amazing and that's <laughs> super awesome. Tell me what it's been like from yeah. going from the blue collar industry and helping men do it to going to women. Tell me the difference. Tell me the transition. Um, I mean, it's, it feels, it's been nice, honestly, in the sense that this is what I'm called to do. So there is that, like, there's, there isn't that cognitive dissonance anymore. There's other things that, you know, kind of weigh on me and we'll talk about stress. Um, uh, but it's not the weight of, I feel like things are not completely lined up. Um, and just moving, um, everybody's different. I, it was, it was a fun, fun time in the contractor's field. Um, so my husband and I co-own a tree company, so I'm definitely still in this space, but it is just a different world. You know that I know that. Um, so it's just, it's, 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 it's fun being in this space because it's, they're more kindred spirits, right? Um, other women who've been through similar experiences and maybe are just, uh, are treading some of those paths that, um, taking some of those steps that I have in the past on this journey. So it's cool to essentially, kind of reach back and help like my younger self time and time again. And so that's been a really neat transition. Definitely been a bit of um, whiplash for certain people because uh, I have been mulling on this for months. And then once I was clear in mind, it was pretty decisive. So I talked to somebody like one day, they sent me a referral like three days later. And I was like, I'm ha- I'm still going to talk to them. But by the way, I like am now a life coach for women. So um, that's been interesting, that identity kind of shift. And I've been growing even in that and releasing fear of what people think, you know. Um, yeah, but it's been good. It's been good. I think the one thing that you said, and I think a lot of us kind of look for is that clear mind. I mm. think sometimes when we're not and, you know, you've been through different journeys and we've all been through different journeys of find ourselves, refining ourselves, finding that passion for that time of our life and finding passion for this time of our life. And I think a lot of times when it's very clouded in our mind or the thoughts are spinning, and again, we all can go through that, right? But when you said that clear mind, it do- doesn't mean empty. It doesn't mean that there's no thoughts. It doesn't mean right. that, right, right, right. Yeah. But it's just, it's like safer, I guess. Mm. I don't really, you know, but like, I like the way you say clear. I like the way mm. that more vision, there's more assertive thoughts. There's, and yeah. I, that's when you kind of know when yeah. you're on that right path, you know? Yeah. I love that distinction. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tell me what it's like to work with Edie. So I'm a woman listening and I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what is it like to work with you? What, tell me what your coaching looks like. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I have three fundamental foundational beliefs to, to the coaching I do. And so kind of the first step in the journey is really having a conversation about these fundamental beliefs, because these are, especially for the women who I'm dealing with, who have, uh, who have, are coming out of spiritual trauma, they've seen a therapist and now they're moving forward in it, but they, they're coming from that place. Um, the important things that I like to remind them are that one, like you can trust yourself. That's a huge thing that gets lost when you externalize direction for your life. Um, So uh, starting with, yeah, the the self-trust piece and then remembering like it is your birthright to be whole and not fragmented. Um, This is like, this could be days long conversation. And then the third um, kind of foundational piece is that, um, by changing your story, you can change other stories. Um, and you know, it, the most impactful thing you can do is do the work in yourself, not run yourself ragged and do all the things that a nice, good girl in your position is supposed to do, but but taking care of yourself. And through that, um, the beauty of that relationship with yourself, helping others. And so just kind of starting there and really mulling and wrestling with that together. And then once we've kind of established that, um, those foundational beliefs, working to realign and uh, re rekindle the relationship with your desires and your inner voice, and you know that that deep knowing within that's like, yeah, like this feels right, and these are the steps that I can take, and um, it's that's that's really the 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 sum total of it. I'm really just I like to say a 
a vessel for restoration in these women's lives. So I, I don't have any proprietary knowledge or anything. That's something that's super important for me because again, coming from this place, it's always like, who's the next person? Who's the next preacher, the pastor, whoever is going to tell me how I need to be living my life. But no, like you have that direct connection to source and the ability to, to figure that out. And I'm just here to hold that space and to say like, yes, I believe in you. And yes, that dream that other people might tell you is crazy or like, uh, is you being discontent? I, I believe it's in you for a reason. So, um, that's what it, that's what it looks like. Just a loving container of challenging you to, to, to start embodying your highest self. And I love the different, like you said, the, the three fundamentals, I think everyone can relate to them in some point yes. of their life. And I also love that you mentioned too, that especially the women that you have probably worked more work with than others is that they're coming from uh, situations that they have this higher person telling them, this is what you have to do. This is how you do it, et cetera, et cetera. So learning how to even find your own voice and find your own passion and things like that, that's a lot easier said than done. But it, again, I think so many people can relate to that, right? Yeah, Trying to put on the space of this good person, you know, maybe a mom, right? You're yep. super stressed and overwhelmed and crying inside but you're hosting a party or you're right. The, you're right. The, the kids have a meltdown or it's her kid's birthday. And so you can't, you can't, I'm air quoting, you can't express those feelings. You have to be in that moment. And that is mm. so much easier said than done. And so for you to kind of have those conversations again, through someone that's been through different situations when it comes, like you said, like the, the cults and spirit, st- spirit struggles with spirituality and yeah. so many things that, you know, that's really, really hard for people. So I appreciate everything you're doing with that. Yeah, thank you. You know, you kind of mentioned this too when we were talking about the transition from the blue collar to the mm-hmm. women. Um, you mentioned that, that we were going to talk about stress. So that's <laughs> <something> that, <laughs> so that's definitely going to be my next question. Yeah. What is the one way your business brings you stress? Yeah. Um right now it would be the um so let's see the the stress of re-identifying Ooh, and wow. re-identifying as something that I've said I would never be. So this is good. I'm going to, yes, this is, this is great. Going to put myself out there. So I've, um, when I was doing work with blue collar folks, uh, it was like a lot of process improvement. And oftentimes people would say, oh, so you do coaching. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I'm a consultant. I, I go in there <laughs> and do the thing because doing the thing is so much more important than the inner work that needs to happen for you to even be able to accept the thing, but I'm gonna leave that alone. So there was a lot of judgment on my part <laughs> against coaches. And even though I have my own coach, I'm like, you're awesome. You're great. But that's just not me. I'm a tactician. You know, I'm an engineer by degree. So um, here I am. I'm a coach. I'm, and I... I say this lovingly because I am now a life coach. I'm not even a business coach. I'm a life coach, which I've always, uh, yeah, I've always like been like, oh, life coaches, which is, I'm, you know, full transparency of uh, judgmental ED. So that's been kind of stressful in a way to, to uh, show up in these places where I've been like, I am the consultant. Now I'm the life coach who's like kind of doing some of this woo woo stuff and I help women. Um, but I mean, people have been really receptive, but it's been essentially uh, uh, a a killing of ego in another way. And that's 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 stressful, right? My my ego doesn't want that, um, but it's been beautiful. But yeah, I would say that's definitely the stressful. I haven't even, by the time the podcast comes out, I'm sure my parents, maybe this will be the podcast I send to my parents. Um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me like get a full roster of clients before I tell my like <laughs> immigrant parents who work very hard for me to be where I'm at, that I am now a life coach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, I would say that's probably the number one way my business right now is bringing me stress. <laughs> I always love to point out this one thing, especially yeah. if you are just listening and not watching is that yeah. when someone talks and their face lights up. So I just want to let you know that was all what was happening right now. And I think this is the coolest thing ever. So if you're not, if you're only listening and not watching, just lighting up. And I just think that's so, so cool. But I love the vulnerability because I think it's so true. I think a lot of us, again, it's so relatable, whether it's changing careers, yeah, you know, getting promoted, mm. take, not taking the promotion and taking the quote unquote lesser job, right? Um, being a stay-at-home mom and not staying in the office, you know, or being a stay-at-home dad and not going to the next, like, there's so many yeah. ways we have this. And there's so many, you said judgments, perceptions mm-hmm. around certain jobs, but I feel, and tell me if you agree at the end of the day, 
if it makes you happy and you're not hurting anybody else, yeah. who cares? Yep. 100%. But like you said, it's that yep. ego. And yep. listen, I, I'll, I'll be, we'll do vulnerable or whatever too. <laughs> I was, when I first started my, my business, I was very much the same way. I'm not a coach. I'm not a coach. <laughs> no, I'm not taking one-on-one clients. But right. you start to learn and, and you take off that ego hat and realize mm. what it is a coach really is and what, mm-hmm. yeah, there is therapists out there. And I love therapy and I think it's amazing. There's something so cool about a coach too. There's something yeah. so cool about those action steps, those accountability steps, yeah. and then seeing that different growth and seeing the different growth within you and within yeah. your business and doing something about it, following your passion, right? There's so many things that come from that. And I think it's very overlooked, but again, yes, because of how it's viewed, we go, oh, it's like you said with your parents, right? Oh, you're a coach. What do you <laughs> mean? Spend all this <laughs> time on her hard, hard part. But like people don't realize, okay, so ego, right? Yeah. And then just building a business in itself that's mm-hmm. or, 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 of a career that's not looked at as a career. And mm-hmm. then trying to make, there's so many things that yeah. go on behind the scenes than right. just sitting and talking to somebody because it's obviously more than what you do in general, but right. this is what it. happens, right? Yeah. Oh, I love your vulnerability. Love it. Yeah, love it. So true. Love that summary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. So before we get into the lightning round, sure. I want to ask you a couple questions. What is the one thing you want the listeners to take away from this episode? Mm. That there is no one more perfectly calibrated to live your life than you. Um, my job and- in the episode right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And if you're disassociated from that, then do the work, but it's there. You know, it, don't believe that it has to be externalized. It's there. Nobody else is perfectly calibrated to live your life. Nobody. I don't care how many degrees they have. Nobody. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what I'd leave. It's like you said, be who you are, love who you are. Like yeah. just that simple, just that simple. Yeah. So for the listener that's listening and they're saying, okay, you're saying all the right things. They want to hire you. What is the best way for them to contact you? Um, you can reach me at my website, um, gardenrestored.co or at Instagram, Garden Restored. That's a fun place. My little, yeah, my little garden of uh, Instagram posts there as well. So any of those places would be a great place to connect. Love it. All right, Edie, let's get right into the lightning round. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready, ready. <laughs> <laughs> what is the favorite thing? What is your favorite thing to do with your daughters? Oh my gosh, my little babies. Yeah. Um, they're so crazy. Um, oh, I love going walking. We have this like long trail that spans Indianapolis and I love going walking with them and just being in nature together for sure. Yes. What is your favorite part about being a coach today? Ooh, oh, just the um, working with the most potent raw material in the world, which is just human possibility. It's just like, oh, I feel like an alchemist. Like, oh, it's just so magical to see people, see people come into their own power. I would say that for sure. Love that. Love that. There goes that smile again, guys. It's lighting <laughs> up over here. It's just lighting up. Oh. We talked a lot about passion today. So mm-hmm. obviously coaching is a passion for sure. That's a new path. I should say new passion. It's a new worked on passion. Yeah. Where do you see, or what do you see another passion in your life being? Hmm. That's good. This has been kind of all consuming. Um, hmm. I, I, so I love hospitality. I love my home. We're in like our dream house, but it needs some work. So I could see me like stepping up and actually doing some renovations. So full circle, I am becoming the, uh, tradesman, tradeswoman <laughs> that I used to serve. Look at that. Best of both worlds. <laughs> obsessed with that answer obsessed <laughs> full arc <laughs> oh my god oh my goodness no I love that answer it's so so good okay um favorite dessert um anything with strawberries in it anything yep yes oh, I love that what is one item that's worth spending money on besides coaching um <laughs> <laughs> but but right um for me a good manicure like I just 
Oh, it just makes wow. me feel really like bougie and like put together, even if I'm raggedy otherwise. So definitely <laughs> a good manicure. Yes. You know, the, there is something to say about a manicure spot. Like you could be in a sweat and just yes. have your nails done. You could be at the gym and have it. And it's right. just, you feel put together. Exactly. You feel put together. Yes. The little touches, Jessica. The little I touches. love it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I love it. Edie, I'm so excited that you came on here today and just enlightened us with all your amazingness, you know, and just again, with that vulnerability and who you are. I just, I just want to say thank you for all that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was amazing. <laughs> yeah.